to thank other residents of War 14 that came out today to listen to us as candidates, uh, to my colleagues who are running for office, and my better half, Teresa, who's been campaigning with me for the past three or four months. As walking down the sections of the new ward, I have heard your concerns that your dollars and tax dollars are not being spent into your community. When you show me about the streets, they're in bad shape, I took pictures. When you show me about the vacant house that was empty, I took those pictures. When I talked to you personally, I took your phone number. And that's for a reason. That reason is when I get back into Cleveland City Council, I have a direct contact with every single one of you with those pictures and phone numbers, and I go back and create a database. When I look at the funds that the city of Cleveland has, over a half a million dollars in the general funds, and over 20 some million dollars on the uh, community development, we have to wonder what is going on. What's going on? Our neighborhoods are being vacuumed to other sections of the ward. Your tax dollars are repairing other sections of the city. But I assure you that when I get into council, I know what happened when I was in council. And I made sure the Clark Metro and the Stockyard areas got their fair share. And we were able to see new housing development occur. We were able to see new businesses open. We were able to see jobs. We were able to see playgrounds. We were able to work with the faith community and build churches in our, in our ward. We talk about the crimes that are occurring right now in the city of Cleveland. Why haven't? Why haven't the members of council demanded the reason and call special meetings and bring the safety forces to us? We need to find out what is it that they need. Do they need special equipment? Do they need more help in order for us to stop that crime? We're losing, continue losing population in the city of Cleveland. And the more we lose population in the city of Cleveland, we're losing congressional seats. We're losing federal dollars. It's time to take action. I'm ready to roll my sleeves up and to tell the new mayor or the mayor who's there, it's time to change. It's time to change. It's not about giving endorsements. It's not about having a yes person in city council. It's about saying yes to the residents. I want to be your employee. I want you to be, be my employer. 25,000 people, you have my number. I've given it to you. I haven't changed my number over the past 30 years. And I'm not going nowhere because my roots are really deep into this community as much as a lot of you have stood behind hoping that there's light in the end of the tunnel. And I want to guarantee you there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. Ms. Garcia. Thank you once again for this opportunity of speaking. I've had my struggles. I was raised in a humble environment. I know what it's like to receive public assistance. I know what it's like to knock on the doors of those social service agencies and get turned away. Many may say that I have been challenged through my life. I want to consider myself blessed. As a single mother, as I stated, I started my business on my own from scratch. I volunteered for this community for over 18 years and I will continuously do that. Each and every individual in this ward has a significant meaning to me. As I mentioned, my mother, my grandchild, and my daughter lives in that ward. I don't want my grandson growing up stating he lives in the hood or in the ghetto. We need to stop speaking this way. We need to be proud of where we live. We've all been through a struggle. And if there's anyone in this room that has never faced adversity, then I congratulate you. And you need to consider yourself blessed. I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to, 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 to face racism. So when I was asked that question, that's why I apologize, because that is not my intention. I love each and every individual that I come across. It has been a very humbling experience to knock on each and every individual's door and be embraced with the love and the compassion and the concerns are my worries. I'm not here to ask you for your vote today and forget about you tomorrow. I plan to continuously struggle 
along with you to make this a better world. Whether I am elected or not, I will continuously work tireless hours to donate my time, to volunteer in numerous organizations, and to be a successful individual as I am today. As I mentioned earlier, many may, may say that I've been challenged. I'm blessed, and I want to share that blessing with this ward and help each and every one of you with all of your concerns. Thank you so much, and may you all have a blessed evening. Councilman Cummins. I too want to thank the organizers of the event. I want to, attend every, uh, to thank everyone who's attended the event. I'm really excited to be running for re-election for the new Ward 14. I'm excited because I really believe that we've made such tremendous progress in the last three and a half years. We tore down houses that sat for three years burnt. Of the 260 houses we tore down, 40 of them were, th were within a thousand foot, thousand feet of a school. We've made tremendous progress. I feel that we are at a second or third level of development. Having first dealt with our housing crisis and really gotten a handle of that, we still have a long way to go, but we know what we're doing. We've engaged investors and homeowners. We've actually begun selling homes to people who live within one block of a vacant home. This, these are not easy things to do. And it's taken us the last three and a half years to really make a much, much progress on the housing front. Approximately two years ago, we also began working on our business uh, plans. You know, it's, it's easy for someone who's not served in the position to say, why does it take 20 years to do a plan for the neighborhood? Well, one of the reasons is that it's a low-income neighborhood, generally speaking, transient population that has not seen strong, effective leadership or strong development corporation in place for more than 5, 10, 15 years. So without that consistency of strength in, in plotting through plans with the engagement of the communities, we're not going to continue to see improvement. I've done this for the last three and a half, four years, councilman in the other area for four years. I know my stuff. I've run a development corporation. We're working very closely. We went from eight to 30 block clubs in the last three and a half years. We've, we've designated an historic district. We're ready to do another one on Scranton. We know how to do placemaking. We're looking very much forward to that third level now where we begin to market and better identify and get community pride of our neighborhoods. Stockyards has a lot of strength. Clark Fulton has a lot of strength in terms of their history and their culture. And so does Brooklyn Center in the portion of Tremont that I'll be representing or continue to represent. So I ask for your vote to help me, help us move our community forward. I think we've been doing a great job, particularly with the engagement of the residents through our block clubs, through the engagement with our teachers and our student pair organizations, with the engagements from our health and human service organizations that we're trying to work with now to identify what are the gaps. Gaps like services in programming for children that are the, the ages between 16 and 19. Very, very difficult age, and we're going to help them. So I ask for your vote to help us uh, move our community forward. Thank you. I'd like to thank the moderators uh, and everybody who attended today. I'm running for four reasons. Community involvement, safety, economic development, job growth, and infrastructure. Those are the four things that, that I want to engage the residents on. As I've spoken to a lot of you out in the community, I've, all, I've, I've told you a story. And that is I have not, and I will not, promise one resident one thing. The only person that I had to promise something to was my wife before she gave me permission to run. The three things that I had to promise her was I would continue to stay engaged in the community. By that, I need to continue to walk the ward even after I'm elected. Two was I had to return every single phone call within 24 hours. The reason that being, as some people will be able to tell you, she doesn't want the problems coming home with us. The third thing is that I would continue to, to not be a politician every four years. With that, with that being said, I'm just like one of you. I drive a van that's 12 years old. I'm invested in the neighborhood. My family is invested in the neighborhood. I grew up here. I was raised here. I'm raising my family here. I hope that they continue to stay and they raise their family. 
you know, you're right, it's not easy for somebody to, cut, to get up here and say what they're going to do because of not having a lack of vision or what have you. But what I can tell you is that I do have a vision. I want the neighborhood, I want Ward 14 to be better, no matter which one of us is elected. It needs to be better for not only us, but for the people who come after us. Our parents set the, for, set the foreground, we're carrying it through. It's, it's up to us to make the place better for those that we're leaving it behind. My name is Brian Casey. I'm a 40-year resident of the city of Cleveland, all in one of two houses. I've never lived. I'm invested here not only through the council, but through the family. I want to thank Ms. Ferris. I want to thank our greeters. I want to thank our translator. I want to thank Ms. Ms. Smith. And I also want to thank Councilman Zone and Councilman Westbrook, because those are the two individuals who have put me in this position. As a former Democratic ward leader, executive committee member, and a precinct committee member, the next logical step for me is to be your council person. Forget the endorsements. I've been endorsed by Local 310, the Cleveland Building and Construction Trades, the Stonewall Democrats. You know what those are? Those are all regular, normal people. That's the type of guy that I am. That's what you're going to get when you get represented by Brian Casey for Ward 14. Thank you. Okay, I want to thank all of you for waiting for your applause now, but you are now allowed to applause. Yeah. Okay, last time I said that we were blessed with three very capable candidates. I will now say we are more than blessed. We have four very, very capable people who I feel very comfortable with no matter who wins. So good luck to you all. And we look forward to working with you. Now, before we leave, I have a couple. Did you think you were going to get away with no public uh, service announcements? I think that maybe some of you saw the barbecue party in the park flyers. Uh, Labor Day week, on September 5th, there will be a party in the park, September 5th at 6 p.m. It is at Trent Park. That is between Fulton and 44th Street, and between Trent and Newark. And then I have, we have one more public service announcement and then I want to thank some people and then we're out of here. Eh, quieren dar las gracias por haber atendido en el día de hoy. Eh, ella se siente muy orgullosa de dejarles saber a ustedes que la semana pasada teníamos tres muy tremendamente cualificados candidatos. Hoy tenemos cuatro candidatos de los cuales se siente muy orgullosa que pueden representar de manera inteligente y sabia a nuestro distrito. Tiene dos anuncios, uno que tiene un barbecue fiesta en el parque, el jueves 5 de septiembre a las 6 de la noche en Trent Park. Now, our second public service announcement is not if such a, a, a great community uh, fun thing. This is something that Matt, uh, Councilman Zone has asked Mr. Brooks to let us all know. Oh, he didn't ask, but Dave's gonna do it anyway. I'm not good at public speaking, so forgive me if I make a couple mistakes. Um, actually, this morning I was looking at Channel 5's website and I happened to notice a story that disturbed me a great deal. I saw the, the new construction, the tunnel at uh, Edgewater Park, vandalized by taggers. I found that very offensive. So I thought I might speak tonight and ask people to call Councilman Zone's office. And he was speaking to his very capable and outstanding office manager, Blanca, and see if maybe there's something you can do to help us contribute some more money to the cause. Councilman Zone has generously put up a thousand dollars award. I would like to see more of us take some action to do something about this. We have to tell these low lowlifes we're not going to tolerate it. So if it's money it takes, 
to bring these losers to justice, I'm all for it. Thank you. That's it. Yo no voy a traducir exactamente lo que él dijo, pero básicamente hubieron unas personas que hicieron graffiti en el túnel de Lake Erie y él quiere que ustedes se vuelvan en... Y él les pide que por favor se vuelvan en llamar a los councilmen, a las comunidades, para prevenir que estos delincuentes sigan grafiteando nuestra ciudad. Gracias. Okay, before we all take off, I want everybody to give themselves a fantastic hand of applause. We got great questions. The other thing I would like to do is, okay, I want to read this. Hey, hey guys, hey, I listened to you for two hours, hold on. Okay, this is from my screeners, and these screeners were chosen by the candidates. So I think we can say this. Thank you, Gloria and crew, for organizing these two forums. Thank you, Helen Smith, for being a great moderator. Congratulations. We appreciate all your hard work to make this happen smoothly. Your screeners. Thanks, all of you. It was wonderful and it was fun.